Okay, I'm here with uh, Babak for the Um So Babak, what was what is the goal behind the forward-looking user experience program you started at Qualcomm? Yeah, I mean it was it was a program that we started um, you know back in 2009, and it really kind of came out of a need where uh, you know we were having these great discussions with, uh, with you know with with colleagues during lunch, and we just kind of realized that you know some of the topics that we're just dis- we're discussing during lunch are. Um, you know, leading to some really great uh, projects within the company. And so we just kind of decided to somehow formalize it to kind of bring people of different backgrounds together uh, and to kind of see if what my friends and I were doing, kind of having these lunchtime discussions, would would resonate with others. And they kind of wanted to do it in a more formal process. So, uh, you know, the first team that we kicked off, it was uh, it was eight of us. And some of us knew each other, but I brought in folks that didn't, um, um, you know, didn't know each other, but the key was to bring in people of a different background. So we brought in uh, people from audio, from graphics, from power, from display, all different, uh, you know, functional teams within the Qualcomm family. And, and, and really the challenge we gave uh, folks was, hey, let's just spend 90 minutes every two weeks to sit together, you know, in these small bursts and just kind of discuss uh, and see if together we can kind of discover a latent user need. If we can come up with something, hopefully a novel solution to an existing problem, or perhaps maybe even a solution to a problem that others didn't even know existed, right? Because there are enough people in the company, myself included, that are looking into what we call the mobile 3Ms, right? The, the more megapixels, and whether it's the display or the camera, or or fewer milliamps, making things faster, uh, you know, less power, or you know, fewer milliseconds, making things uh, more and more quickly. So, the focus of Flux was not necessarily, you know, focusing on mobile's three ends, it's really about the user experience. Let's take a break from our jobs, let's uh, bring in people you normally wouldn't talk to, and let's discuss what is it that users really, really want. If it's if it's eight cores, well, then maybe we'll put eight cores on a CPU, but perhaps it's, it's, uh, it's other things, it's little nuances. And I think that's, you know, obviously what Apple got right with the iPhone. It was, I believe they underclocked their CPU in order to, um, you know, extend battery life and to have this great overall uh, UX. And so that was the goal of Flux, is to bring people that didn't know each other together for 90 minutes every two weeks and see where the discussions go. And the emphasis was on user experience and on being innovative. So it's not a, a club where we come up with business ideas. We actually already have an official program where employees can submit ideas um, you know, uh, to uh, our, our formal program whereby those ideas uh, are vetted and then some of them are selected to be pursued, our club, Flux, is about new ideas, whether they're big or small. So they don't have to be things that move the needle. They don't have to sell, you know, millions, hundreds of millions of chips. It just has to pass two tests, useful and novel. And what we found was is that by bringing people together that normally don't interact um, uh, and being patient and, and, and kind of letting your mind flow and not being judgmental or, or too technical, you can really come up with some interesting, uh, you know, uh, discover some, some interesting user needs. So that's kind of where it started. We started the first team. Uh, that team had some great successes. And then so um, I went ahead and kicked off a second team during lunch, again, inviting uh, 10 to 15 people that didn't know each other into a room, asking them to spend 90 minutes every two weeks. That team had great success. We then kicked off a third team, um, and that team had great success. And then... Uh, because this was a, a you know a part-time activity, it started to take up a lot of the time, and that's when uh, some of the members stepped up and said, "Hey, I'll take on the fourth team, and I'll take on the fifth team." So it just kind of grew from there. So what a couple friends and I started as an experiment uh, over the last four years has grown to multiple teams on 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 three continents, um, and we've captured uh, you know at a minimum we capture IP on the ideas, um, and at a minimum uh, that's what we do, and so. And I think so far we've captured over 50 uh, patents pending in the uh, 50 months, uh, you know, four years or so that we've been running. So that that's just a testament, I feel, to the the, the passion for innovation and and the, and the and the creativity and the curiosity of of Qualcomm employees how they gave this program a try and many liked it, some perhaps moved on, but how we've been able to accomplish so much in just the in just the, the couple years we've been running. And, and again, it's all been during lunch.
much, and it's all been volunteer driven. It's it's been fantastic. That's outstanding. That sounds great. Um, what what has surprised you most about you know what about this experience about uh, that's a great question, uh, Hori. I think what surprised me the most, you know, it, it was, you know, again, it was something that we did because we felt it kind of needed to get done. We didn't, we didn't know where, if there was a place in the company where we could go to and and kind of just brainstorm and think outside the box and, and sit with people that um, that were different than us. You know, talk to people in the other halls, if you will. And so it's something that we did for ourselves. Um, and then as we brought more and more people, they really enjoyed it. So I think, to be honest, what surprised me the most is how much other people got, got you know, bitten by this, by this bug of what we call, uh, you know, stumping a Google search. Our goal in those meetings, um, you know, it's not just camaraderie, it's not just great discussions, but, you know, we have an agenda, we take meeting minutes, and we have a process, and, and, and the goal is to play this game, as we call it, of stumping a Google search. Can we together in a room come up with something that we have that possibly no one in the world has thought of at a minimum um you know do a google search or or, or do, do a prior art search and so i think what surprised me the most is how many people in our company have enjoyed playing this game and, and, and willing to give up their time uh you know to play this game and, and you know the company is the one that keeps the rights to uh, the work that we produce and it's the company who uh, uh you know obviously owns the rights to any products or services that are deployed, and so for people, employees to go above and beyond their regular 50-hour weeks to then also participate in Flux is just, it's been awesome. And we have, yeah, that's been the most rewarding. And one of the other things that kind of, you know, maybe surprised me was, uh, you know, we had employees who came to one meeting, they liked it so much they wanted to be in another team uh, that met on, you know, the following Wednesday, and then... Uh, you know, uh, Sri Ram wanted to be on a, on a third team, and then he wanted to start his own team. And some people really get a kick out of it, right? It's not something for everyone. Not everyone enjoys sitting in a room and brainstorming. It's very difficult. Anyone who says, uh, you know, ideas are dime a dozen, uh, uh, you know, isn't thinking about coming up with novel ideas. Novel ideas are not dime a dozen. You know, again, we've been at it for many, many years, for whatever, four years, and, you uh, you know, we have a good collection of, but we don't have thousands of ideas. We have, I would say, you know, uh, 50 to 70 really unique ideas. So that's what surprised me is how some people really enjoy playing this game. Because that's how we see it. And, and we see it as a sport, something that you get better at with practice, something that you want to master, something uh, that is difficult at first, uh, but uh, there is a reward in seeing yourself get better at what we call bending seeds. Um, what that means is, you know, we, we take pride in having someone bring a topic to a meeting, something that is as tangential to our business as people getting in and out of elevators, right? Like, yep. isn't, it, isn't it rude how, uh, you know, sometimes you're trying to come out of an elevator, but there's people coming in. It's like, guys, let wait for us to get out, and then you can come in. And so we will literally spend, you know, half an hour, an hour talking about this, but not but we bend the seed. We don't. We're not as interested in uh, specifically getting people in and out of elevators. But we bend it. We, we, we pivot and we take it to a direction that uh, is somehow is related to wireless and mobile technology. And, and from that idea, we came up with something really interesting, which I can't discuss right now because we're in, in a process. But uh, you know, to something related to uh, uh, something that, that wireless would, would play a role in. And so whether it's trying to save the post office, whether it's getting in and out of elevators, we talk about common problems mm -hmm. um, or problems that we see, and then we pivot. We, we keep bending the seed towards something novel and useful that our company, you know, this our mothership, if you will, is interested in. That sounds outstanding. Um, so while doing while doing this, I, I, I would guess you, you guys have come up with, with, uh, with some kind of creative process can you go into that? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, people think like, you know, Bob, like you, you and the Qualcomm employees together, how did you guys, and again, we were small when we started, right? It was literally eight people, um, and then it was 16, and then eventually it was 32 and 64 and 128 and whatever, you know, we go on. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we kind of made it up as we, as we went, uh, but what we found works best is, 
Um, and, you know, a lot of this we kind of did actually do early on is to, is to keep it democratic, which means anyone can bring any topic to the meeting. It's a place where you feel safe. You're not going to feel judged. Um, it's not a place where necessarily a lot of you know, management's going to be there and, 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 and drive discussions. It's, it's, it's a grassroots effort. It's by the people, for the people. Um, and so a typical session is we first thing we do is we open up the floor to anyone who's interested to talk about you know, a cool article they read or a pain point that they have, whether it be personal or, or work-related, and we'll just kind of see where discussions go. And the job of a moderator, every team has a moderator, is to, um, you know, A, take notes, because if, in fact, the discussions, which perhaps may start from, you know, talking about an elevator, if those discussions arrive at something, um, at a problem and a, and a possible solution pair that uh, once deeper dives are done, appears to be novel, and IP is filed, we need to know who the inventors were. So at a minimum, uh, we take meeting minutes to know who said what, because we don't put all people who were there that day on the, you know, on the application. So the moderator's job is to take, um, is to open up the floor, to allow discussions to flow freely, to take meeting minutes, uh, to really, and this is key, to have a good gut feeling about what may be novel and what may not, and help guide those discussions towards a, a good, a, a positive outcome. So we may talk about look at, look, you know, putting a GPS tracker in a shoe, but that's not really novel. That's, people have talked about GPS trackers and backpacks and shoes and what have you. So we'll, we'll kind of take that and we'll, we'll talk about, well, what's, what is it that we're trying to do? It's tracking. Well, why does it have to even be wearable? Could it be, let's say, satellite-based? We just, we just because we have the people in the room, each of a different background, both technical and social and, you know, economical, then the discussions really go in these interesting directions. So it's the moderator's job to kind of guide the discussions towards interesting directions, but then also be sensitive enough not to cut off a discussion too early, whereby, um, you know, where people, let's say, feel uh, excluded or, or you know, we, we didn't dig deep enough in one direction before we kind of came out the other end. So... Um, and then we have the, the, naturally we have the follow through. So the moderator takes notes, and anything interesting that is discussed during those 90 minutes are, are highlighted. People are assigned to those projects, and there's follow up. And you know we've come up with thousands of ideas in, in the past, you know, uh, four years. But you know very few actually stick after you kind of noodle on it and rest on it for you know, a week or two, and if you see yourself drawn back to something you hit upon in a meeting, then it's, then it's one that we'll pursue. Sometimes in a meeting, we will just hit it out of ballpark. We'll find a, a, an interesting problem, come up with what we believe is an ideal solution, and we'll start, uh, um, you know, talking next steps, uh, you know, soon afterwards the meeting. But the, the, the meetings are pretty loose. Uh, we send out an agenda of possible topics to discuss just so people can do a little bit of homework and think about topics before they come to the meeting. But again, we also open up the floor to discuss, um, you know, whatever the team wants to discuss that day. Um, so it's, there is no secret sauce. The secret sauce is, is just having passionate people who are curious. The, the number one skill you need to have is, is to be a curious soul, someone who wants to learn, who, who wants to participate, who wants to try it out, and who has faith because they've seen it happen in the past, that this simple process of people sharing experiences collectively, um, you know, can work. And, and we found there's a good size. Two people brainstorming is not enough mix. Fifty people, that's too big. People out talk to each other. It, it gets frustrating. People are left out. There is a, um, a, you know, a good medium in there. And, you know, 10 to 15 oftentimes works best because while some people are talking, others are thinking about, um, you know, how to expand on it. So, um, mm -hmm. There is no secret sauce. You just need curious people, people who, who, who again, see it as a sport and want to do it. Outstanding. Um, at any point, did you think about implementing something similar to uh, Google's 20% time strategy to give people time to play on, on, on you know, on, on emerging ideas or interesting ideas? Yeah, so, I mean, there are R&D teams within the company. I mean, Qualcomm's huge. We're, yeah. I think, approaching 28,000 employees. So I do know that there are R&D teams uh, that do provide the 20% time to their employees, but you know it, it's not a company-wide policy by any means. At Qualcomm, it's very execution-focused. Our chips are in so many handsets and tablets, and we have you know so many customer. I, I forget the number of design wins we have. I think it's it's mind-boggling, and so we're very execution-focused. And I don't think Qualcomm is in a position to 
you know, hire 20% more people whereby the 20, the people that we have can take one day a week to explore. I mean, I wish in a perfect world that all companies could be like that, but sometimes it's just not, it's just not practical. Um, and so we found great success um, by not doing the 20% time individually, but by doing, if you will, 2% time collectively. Mm-hmm. So if everyone can contribute 2%, you know, one lunch break, uh, you know, uh, out of every 10 or however often they want to come to, uh, you know, their meetings, it's amazing how just a little bit can go a long way if everyone kind of pitches in and is willing to do it. So, um, now obviously Google's 20% has worked very well for them. Uh, I believe Maps and their mail applications uh, have yeah. come out of that. So those have been billion dollar hits. Uh, we don't have through our Flux program any projects we can point to that are a billion dollar hits. But right now, um, it's a Flux is a great way to complement, you know, ongoing R&D efforts, whether it's the multiple R&D teams we have or the official, uh, um, you know, uh, employee uh, uh, participation program where employees submit ideas and, and those can turn into projects. So Flux is mm-hmm. one of many uh, things the company supports all the way up to the CEO and COO and CMO level, uh, whereby employees can kind of participate. They can pick and choose. They can... Um, you know, participate in as many or as few of these initiatives that the company has as possible. Cool. Um, what were the main obstacles, if any, that you had to overcome to get traction for for for, for the initiative? You know, I, I, I don't. You know, I've been Qualcomm's the only place I've worked at. Uh, you know, over. I mean, I, I've worked at Qualcomm nine years, and I've been here. Uh, uh, you know, again, like I said, for a while, and it's it's. You know, obviously, no company is without fault, but as far as Flux, it's been a great ride in that the only obstacle maybe we had to overcome was just to prove ourselves, right? Like, at the beginning, you know, uh, we could have gone to senior executives and say, hey, we want to do this, please fund it, please support it, but although they may have supported it, we we didn't have the reputation, right? So you have to build the brand, you have to build the credibility, if you will, with employees and with upper management, and so... We decided to not take the route of let's email 30,000 employees, say we're doing this, and who wants to participate. We decided to go the other way, grassroots. Let's see if it'll even work. Let's learn as we go. Let's learn what works, what doesn't work. Let's start with one team and two and three. And, you know, now we're uh, you know, well past 10. And, um, and so the only obstacle was us putting in, us meaning the employees who participate in the program, is, is to put in the time and the elbow grease, if you will, to come up with some really clever ideas that the company uh, would want to fund. I mean, uh, you know, the company spent million, millions of dollars protecting these ideas, and at a minimum through IT and, and some of it through, uh, through prototypes as, as well. And the only obstacle has just been us proving ourselves, but knock on wood, we're at a point now. Um, we kind of reached it, I'd say, uh, a year and a half ago where uh, we had great um, participation, we had some great ideas, and when we finally, you know, approached C-level executives, they were they were impressed. They were like, wow, you guys did this on your own, um, and you've got great results to show for it. How can we help? And so we talked to our CEO, and we said, you know, Paul, we would lo- appreciate it if um, you could throw your support behind the club and, uh, you know, uh, attend and keynote our third birthday party in our huge auditorium. And, Paul, you know, was happy to do so. He came out, he spoke, he participated in a brainstorming session. I mean, to have our CEO of a multi-billion dollar company come and and, and brainstorm with uh, interns and other employees that were there that day was <laughs> phenomenal. So that gave us a huge boost. Um, and then with his support, then a lot of other opportunities opened up where human resources wanted to really kind of get behind us and give us whatever we needed. They've been phenomenal. And, and I think it was just... Uh, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago that we celebrated, uh, you know, our fourth birthday, and that was, that's when our chief operational officer, uh, you know, Stephen Molenkoff, took us all out to, to celebrate, and, and a lot of other executives were there, and it was just fantastic. So, there, I'm not, were there obstacles? No, because in the sense of, if you if you do great work, people recognize great work, uh, and if you do it requiring a small footprint, if you're not too needy or too pushy, um, people respect that. And it's, I don't know, I mean, it, it, 
few things in life are like a fairy tale story, and but Flux has been an amazing story. I mean, it, it's been great. Well, that sounds great. Um, what? I mean, if what advice do you have for other established companies that want to start an innovation program or you know think tank like Flux? No, I, you know, another great question, and, and that's one reason I've been uh, fortunate enough to speak, to be invited to speak at several conferences. Uh, some of them have been so excited that they've actually asked you know myself or other members of Flux to uh, you know come out and speak repeatedly, and 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 so that's what we try to do. What we're actually trying to do, and why I'm speaking with you already today is, is to kind of let people know that uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be this big process with a lot of management and a lot of, and a huge budget and a lot of structure in order to get employees connected whereby ideas are exchanged. You can engineer serendipity. You can, you can provide situations where employees get together and discuss things for the benefit of their own Selves and their own feeding their own passions, coupled with great things that can that can happen for the company. So, the advice I would have for companies is, is one that I I've given uh, you know uh, what, you know when asked is is just try it right. Find a champion in the company, someone who believes in it, someone who really is doing it for the right reasons, and just literally have him or her pick eight or ten people, some of them whom he knows, some of them who he or she does not know. And literally bring them in a room um, and give them the challenge of let's just spend one lunch break out of every 10 and just talk about what cool stuff, things about, you know, life, pain points, uh, um, and, and kind of see where it goes. We had one uh, employee, Shriram, again, his name keeps popping to mind, where, you know, he talked about he was on a bus and when he got off the bus, he told the bus driver, thank you. And the bus driver... Uh, and the person he was talking to felt that he was telling her thank you, so she hung up. She thought the conversation was over. And, and most people would have just called back. They would have said, oh, I was telling the bus driver thank you, not back you. But, you know, we bring those topics, those little observations mm -hmm. to our meetings, and we discuss them. And that actually led to an idea that, that uh, we really, really liked. When we did some research, turns out it was already done. In fact, it was done by um, Paul Allen of Microsoft. He had an IP related to... Uh, this idea that was inspired from Sh Sri Ram's uh, pain point on a bus. And so my point is, companies should just try it. Um, if it works, fantastic. You'll have the successes we've had. You'll, you may have more, which, was, which would be fantastic. And if it doesn't work, if people aren't engaged, not a problem. I mean, there's other ways to, um, uh, you know, to, to make innovation happen. There's, there, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Innovation is messy. It's dirty. It's, it's, uh, it's by nature has to be complex and, and yeah. in order to make a discovery. So my advice is just try it. Find a champion, find someone who believes in it, let he or she go for it, see if it scales. If it doesn't scale, figure out why it didn't scale. And if, and if you care to, try to uh, correct it and do another run and do another run and do another run and, and hope that uh, on one of these iterations that one team does turn to two and the two does turn to three. And it does go, in our case, all the way to Hyderabad in India and Markham, Canada and, 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 and the United Kingdom and Boulder, Colorado. Like, it may just work. And there's a good chance it will work because I think people in uh, a lot of the companies that I've spoken to, they're, they're, they're passionate about engineering and technology, uh, or, or, you know, and whether it's Procter & Gamble, where it's related to soap, or whether it's Qualcomm, it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's moving atoms. And people that are interested in this space gravitate towards these programs. Um, it may not work at, you know, uh, in, uh, in all uh, industries, but in, in, in technology, chemistry, biological, the sciences, the people gravitate towards these types of programs, is, is my gut feeling. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Last two, uh, what are you most proud of about this this initiative? I think I'm most proud of, you know, honestly, it's, uh, you know, it's how it makes people feel. And when they feel good, um, I, in turn, as one of the founders and one of the leads, I feel good. Um, and so, you know, not to make it all kumbaya and, and uh, soft and fluffy, but it's really about the human connection. It's really, you know, when I get an email from 
uh, Aditya in India saying how this is like the coolest meeting she goes to, how it's it's made her feel more connected with the company. She's, she's found new friends. It's a place where she has connected with people. She's, uh, you know, um, she, she, she's got her first patent uh, that, you know, her and her parents are so proud of. And to know that, you know, uh, you know, an engineer in building AV and here in San Diego and his buddies uh, started this and it's helped touch lives uh, in India. And, 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 you know, again, like I mentioned, people like Sri Ram, who three meetings is not enough. They want to run their own team and, and they're becoming leaders of this, of this company. You know, it's that human element that I think makes me the most, makes me the proudest. You know, the, the prototypes, the patents, they're wonderful. We have some fantastic ideas uh, that we're seeing in the wild now. Um, but really, it's just making Qualcomm a more enjoyable place to work for people that, uh, for me and uh, the other moderators who run these teams, I think is what we've enjoyed the most and why we keep doing it, right? It hasn't been easy. It's been thousands of hours of work. It's very difficult to run this club in the sense of the organization and, and getting the teams to communicate and knowing which projects to move forward and which ones don't and who are the marketing and um, and the events that we put on. And we just don't do brainstorming, right? You know, we realized early on that some people came to the meetings, they enjoy them, but it, they didn't stick. And when we, when we, when we talk to them, they said that they enjoy the camaraderie, they enjoy the networking, but brainstorming, trying to find a needle in a haystack, a problem to solve, uh, you know, and a novel solution to that problem is, is difficult. And they're happier, um, you know, in more constrained boundaries, if you will, where they come to work, they know what to do, and they go home. And so for that crowd and, and for our own crowd, we, uh, we created several other programs, and one of them is the Flux Screenings, which is uh, an employee-driven program, again, where employees submit cool videos. Mm -hmm. So with the help of HR, we book a room, actually three rooms because we've grown, uh, and, and so we, we book rooms and we order some, some food, and, and employees get up and show a cool video, and, uh, and, and then we discuss those videos. So A, it's it's fun to learn from these videos, we discuss them, and we always kick off the meeting with a networking round where everyone introduces themselves, what project they're working on, and we've seen how just the movie screenings has been a great way for people in the room to carry those discussions forward after the meeting, whereby someone says they're working on heat dissipation using a thermal gun and someone else is interested in that or has some knowledge in that, those two will now pair up. So what's really were intermediaries, where where uh, a, a, a you know, we're a group that gets people connected mm -hmm. so that innovation can happen. So we have the screenings, we have uh, the Flux Sparks, as we call it, which is sharing trip reports, right? Why should an employee who goes to a conference on behalf of the company who, who, who comes back and does a trip report with his team of 10, 20, 30, 40 people on a team, let's say, why not share it with all 30,000? Yeah. Why not create a place where those that are interested can come and listen to the presentation uh, done by another employee, and then again discuss it. And we have we have multiple brainstorming lists, each one capped at 50, whereby those discussions can then move on to you know offline, if you will. Uh, and then uh, so again, it's it's uh, not to get off too far on a tangent, but it's not just the brainstorming that we do. We have these other programs to help employees connect. And you ask me what the satisfaction is. Uh, or what's been the, the thing we're most proud of, and it's making those connections. It's, it, I'm not, it's a little bit like matchmaking, right? I bet you if you were to do a survey of people who are happiest in their jobs, you may find matchmakers, mm -hmm. you know, ha on that list well, because they feel great about introducing, let's say, Samantha to, you know, uh, to John. And if Samantha and John hit it off and eventually, let's say, they get married and have children and live their lives together, that matchmaker knows that, wow, that, 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 that's a great feeling. And so that's why I, I think myself and the other moderators do it. Because we like seeing other people connect and exchange ideas. We, we don't network for title. We don't network for position or influence. We network for ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just been really rewarding. That sounds so amazing. Um, last question for you. What did you learn about yourself from, from this experience? Or what have you learned about yourself? Wow, another great question. Uh, you, know, you, know, some, you know, I speak at conferences sometimes, and uh, usually there's like a five or ten minute Q&A, and, and people ask good questions, but you're asking some really deep ones. Um, let me think about that. What is it that I've learned about myself? Uh, 
you know, what's really interesting is I actually can, I can be, and some people don't believe this, but I can be rather shy at times. I was a shy child growing up, and, you know, we came from Iran when I was young and moved to the States, and, uh, you know, anyway, so I didn't, I, I didn't go to my high school prom, if you will, and during my four years at UCSD, I lived at home, and Dad would drop me off in the morning and pick me up in the evening, so... <laughs> You know, I kind of tended to be shy, and over the years, now mind you, that was some 20 years ago, and so over the years, I've come out of my shell and, and explored more and started trying to start businesses and, and done uh, other social things, and I'm at a point now where, you know, Flux has helped validate, at least for me personally, that, uh, you know, I should put myself out there more. I should say yes to more opportunities. I should take more risks, uh, you know, uh, that uh, it's not necessarily good to just kind of be in one's cubicle and do the nine to five and, and hang out with just friends and family. It's, it's good to put yourself in uncomfortable situations where you, in my case, ask 15 people to come to a room and, and try to convince them to go on this flux journey. So for me personally, I think it, it has helped me uh, show that I do have the leadership skills in order to lead a team. And uh, that, that's something that I've personally gotten out of it. And, uh, but in addition, like I said before, the relationship. So my social network has grown considerably. And whereas before, maybe I used to have lunch by myself at times. Now, you know, it's great to have all these people, very interesting, curious people that have gravitated towards this flame, towards this project that I can have lunch with and spend time with. So it's, it's been rewarding for me on, on those two levels. Yep. Amazing. Um, Babak, any additional thoughts that you would like to add? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, your question that you asked earlier about what would you tell other companies is really my motivation for giving, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, interview, if you will. And it's really about other companies who hear this message, who hear about Qualcomm's flux story. I think it really behooves you to at least try. You have nothing to lose. You know, the first three years when we did this, our budget, uh, you know, and, and this was on purpose. We certainly we could have gotten more money, but our bu budget was $500 a year. <laughs> We were an official Q club in the company, and clubs get a certain budget. You know, the poker club gets a budget, the golf club gets a budget, the, um, you know, the cycling club gets a budget, and we wanted it to be just like any other club. Granted, with innovation, granted, it's prototypes, it's patents, it's commercialization. We could have asked for more money, and I'm confident we would have gotten it. I worked in an R&D team at the time. They had, you know, a lot, enough money to cover what we needed, but we purposely chose to be lean and to learn and, you know, the first three years, we, uh, outside of our IP uh, budget, you know, as far as our, our, our general budget, it was $500 a year. And so th there's no reason why a company who prides itself in innovation, as Qualcomm does, can't take this chance and find a champion, find someone who's passionate enough, and let them go and say, you know what? You got $500, you got you and your buddies, go see what she can do, and you will be surprised what they can do um, if you give them very little direction and let them feel like owners. Right? Daniel Pink wrote a great book called Drive, and in there, um, and I read it some time ago, so I don't remember all the details, but it talks about like the three motivational factors, you know, what motivates us, right? And it talked about, uh, you know, the first thing is mastery, right? People like to work on projects where they can get better and they can see the progress, whether it's playing piano or violin or, or computer programming, what I do. So mastery is one. Uh, the other one that's really key is autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I feel Flux has worked is because my managers at the time and my managers now, uh, they haven't gotten involved. They've let us run it our way. And the fact that it's our club, it's our initiative, granted we're you know more than a thousand members now and uh, and, you know, several million dollar budget for, for certain projects, it's been kind of hands off. And so the last message I want to give is companies should try this. They should find a champion, let them do it their way, uh, and, and kind of monitor from a distance. And if they see growth, organic growth, then you are on your way. If it stalls, investigate why it stalled and then pivot and try again try a new approach, maybe you start with the videos. Maybe you don't start with the heavy lifting of the brainstorming. That may not be for everyone. So maybe you start with the videos or the trip reports, or maybe you go straight to brainstorming. But 
my final message is that if com- I don't know how many companies have a program like Flux. Um, many maybe have the 20% time or, or other initiatives, but I think they should complement their current processes with a program like Flux. And if anyone has any questions, they're welcome to, you know, uh, you know, to contact me. I'm Bob Akes at qti.qualcom.com, and, you know, I'd be, uh, you know, happy to help, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, with, with answering some questions. And, and uh, you know, it's, you know, Qualcomm, we give away a lot of our, uh, you know, we certainly have a business whereby we sell hardware, but we have a lot of open source projects, right? We have an open source project called AllJoint, which allows phones to connect and tablets to connect. It's this internet of everything, allowing things to connect. We give that away. We have something called Euphoria, which is used by thousands, tens of thousands of developers. It's one award on how to do augmented reality, point the camera or tablet mm. at a target and, and, and uh, you know, c- combining this virtual world with the real world. We give that away. And with Flux, it's kind of similar. If people have questions, if they want to learn more, they can contact us. We'd, we'd like to help. And, and, and the only thing we ask is, kind of like with the open source mantra, if you learn something, if you've added something, if something works for you, give it back to the community. Let us know about it so then we can try it too. Outstanding. And that was actually going to be my next question. If people want to learn more, um, how can they reach you? I, I, I mean, I, I heard you just uh, set your email. Um, how about uh, social media or any websites? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, if they have any questions around, uh, you know, how to start this, at, at start something similar at, uh, you know, their uh, their company, it's really just best to just kind of email me. Okay. Bob at F uh, at uh, QTI, it stands for Qualcomm Technology uh, Incorporated, um, dot Qualcomm dot com. The social media is more my private life. You know, the Twitter, the Facebook. I mean, they're welcome to follow that, but that's, you know, uh, more about my, you know, family and kids and, and all that. So, but if they have any questions about Flux, um, just shoot me an email. And, and the questions that I can't answer, I will. The ones that I can't, uh, you know, then, I, you know, I won't be able to. But uh, um, well, thanks so much, Ryan. That was, I, 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 uh, I appreciate you having uh, followed us and, 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 and familiarizing yourself with our, our, uh, what we offer and, and for asking some fantastic questions and I appreciate the opportunity to kind of help us, you know, kind of spread the word about what's worked for us in case others choose to do something similar. Yes. Um, I really appreciate you uh, sharing this information and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to express something myself because um, down here, I'm in Tijuana by the way, so I'm across the border. So, mm-hmm. so we're barely just starting to scratch the surface on, on, you know, creating a culture of even entrepreneurship and, and even innovation. So one, mm-hmm. one thing that I've started is the, what I call the lunch club, which is similar to what, mm-hmm. you're, to what, you're, to what you're saying. I mean, which is, which is, which is really funny um, because it's kind of the similar thing. I basically do this twice a month and uh, mm-hmm. I just invite people to have lunch, you know, random people. And then we just get to meet, <laughs> and then talk about talk about issues, basically. Um, yeah. So it's, it's it's I mean it's just and it's just starting that. Most people, I mean, they kind of <laughs> don't get it because it's not like oh I want to talk about you know it, it's not a lunch thing you know what I mean. So I mean it's I'm just yeah. I'm just starting with that. I've, I've been up to it for for two months now, but I mean it's kind of similar to what to what you're saying, which is funny to me. So I mean I just wanted to throw that at at you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean yeah, if you just keep it here, you know, we never. Uh... You know, for some of the other programs, like when we do the videos and the trip reports, we do have uh, the company pick up the tab for lunch, and, and it's just a very, uh, you know, we get we get a nice turnout. But when it comes to the brainstorming, the actual heavy lifting, the work, that one it's a bring bring your own lunch. We 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 want employees who participate in the small teams, 15 or less, who are there who want to brainstorm to come, if you will, for the camaraderie and the brainstorming, not necessarily. You know, for other reasons, and so some programs we have, uh, you know, we cater, and others we don't. Mm. Uh, some programs we give away T-shirts, and and we have some swag. Other ones we kind of don't. So, yeah, I, I think if uh, you know, it's wonderful you're doing that, and and it's just it, it, it'll be surprised. You'll be surprised at what can come out of it. If and I guess the other thing to add is if the people who show up see the moderator, in this case you being the lead, uh, has the follow through. Yeah. Right. If, if you have these discussions and collectively you come up with something really interesting, 
if time and time again nothing ever comes out of it, people may go on to the next club. They may go on to the next meetup or the next event. Whereas if they see you following up, like, you know, the fact that a month ago you talked about this one project and then you found someone in the field that's interested that may want to help or that they can share some knowledge, as long as people feel they're moving forward, yeah. then you'll see your, uh, your, uh, you know, your audience grow. So if, if you personally have any questions, you know, you got my number, feel free to call me. Outstanding. Well, Babak, thank yeah. you so much again. Um, I'll, I'll work on this on the weekend and I'll let you know when I post it. I'll send you, I mean, I'll send you the text so just so you can check it out and, and, and you know, if you want to take something out or you want to work with it, I mean, you can, you can edit it if you want. I'll do that before, before I, you know, I publish anything. Okay, yeah, great. And you know what, honestly, uh, you know, because I thought, because the interview went pretty well and I didn't uh, stutter or didn't uh, uh, goof up, I mean, if you wanted to throw the audio file on there too, uh, uh, you know, that, that would be okay too. If that's something you normally do. If you don't, that's fine. Okay. Uh, but uh, you have my permission for that if, if you needed to. Okay, per perfect. Um, just yeah. what, one last, last thing, um, just to write your, your bio, um, you can, mm -hmm. I mean, you could, you could either send it to me or, or I could write it down right now. Um, you know, I'll send it to you. If you Google my name, there's, uh, uh, there's some on the web that you'll find. There's one from MX conference that I think is good, but you know what, I'll just, I'll just send it to you. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah. I can, so I can put it on, on the, on the blog post. Got it. Okay, bye, bye Well, thanks. well, great. Thanks so much, Roy. I appreciate uh, you know you having reached out earlier. Uh, I think it was my mirror deck that I think maybe caught your attention. So thank you for the kind words on that, and and for you know the opportunity to you know be on your blog. I, I've been checking it out, and it's uh, you're doing some great work. Yo, well, thanks so much. Thanks so much, and, and likewise, okay. and uh, you know we'll stay in touch. Thanks so much. Alrighty. Okay. Oh. Great. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you.